Unlike some survival games, building in Valheim is not optional. At the very least, you'll need to build a small base to be able to sleep and use your crafting stations. In this video, I'm going to discuss the basics of building in Valheim so you can get started on building the base of your dreams. So first things first, let's talk about how building works in Valheim. So Valheim has a built-in building integrity system. What that means is you're going to notice here that each of these pieces has a different color. Blue means that it's grounded to the ground. Green is just one piece off of the grounded area. And then you're going to have yellow, orange, and red. As long as anything is not going to be red, you can build off of it. However, once you start attaching to things that are yellow, they're going to become orange. The orange is going to become red. And then you're going to have to end up building supports and stuff to keep it from falling apart. So just keep that in mind. The biggest thing you want to do is make sure that all the pieces on the ground, as you can see here from this pre-existing structure, all the pieces that are here on the at the very bottom are blue. You want to make sure everything at the bottom is blue. Because if your floors are green or your lowest walls are green, that means you're going to not be able to build as high. You're not be able to build as long and stuff like that. So just make sure you do that. Next up is going to be that more likely than not, your first house is probably going to be best. The best bet is going to be to use one of these pre-existing structures and just fix it up because you're not going to have resources right at the beginning of the game. And it's going to be easy just to fix this thing up and then use it. Once you're done with it, though, and you find a place where you want to build, you can go around and any of these structures that look like this, you can just tear them apart. So all you have to do is have a hammer and a workbench. I put the workbench over here. And what we're going to do is we're just going to start deconstructing this. This is going to give us extra wood to use. It's going to be the fastest way to actually be able to build or to collect collect wood at the beginning of the game rather than chopping down trees. OK, so once you have the structure, the area that you're going to build in, if there was nothing there, that's fine. But this was just a flat area. I recommend building on a flat surface. The reason for that is it's going to be much easier to build to get your floors to be blue, your walls to be blue at the bottom so that you can get the maximum support out of them. So once you've done that, you can either leave it as is, but I'm going to recommend flattening it out using a hoe. The reason I want to do that is because what it's going to do is it's going to get rid of the grass as well. So the grass is not sticking through your floors. Now, whatever level you're standing on when you use the hoe, that's what level the gra the ground around you is going to go to within reason. I mean, if it's if it's got a giant hill here, you're going to notice it's start popping up there a little bit, but that's OK. We're just trying to get it as flat as possible. Now, one thing to keep in mind is the game is still in early access, so it's not fully optimized. The more instances you have, the more performance issues you're going to have. Now, at the beginning here, like this little bit of stuff is not going to cause too much problems because it's not that many. But every time you terraform a any of the ground or the surface or the terrain, it's going to add an instance. Any building piece you add is going to add an instance. You're normally not going to have issues until you get into like the tens of thousands of instances before you start seeing FPS drops or anything like that. But if you plan on building a massive a massive house or base or whatever like that, a compound village, something like that, just be mindful when you're terraforming to do it as little as possible. So now that we have the flat surface here, what we're going to do is we're going to start building. We're going to start doing that by placing down our floors. So I'm going to build a house that is going to be the one that I tore apart. You're going to see that's a typical long house. I'm not going to go that route. I like to just build with normal walls like that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start placing down floors here. And you're going to notice that they are all blue. So once we have our floors down, what we're going to be planning on next is where we're going to be placing our bed. And if you've obviously survived through the first couple of days or if this is your first day, you're going to need you're going to know that you have to have a fire that is nearby your bed. When it says nearby, I believe it's within 10 meters. Each one of these floor pieces here is a two by two. So if I put my bed here, the fire would have to be, I believe, like right around here. You'll just have to test it out and see exactly what the distance is. But I believe it's 10 meters within 10 meters. So what some people do is they just put a campfire outside of their walls. The issue with that is going to be that if it rains, it's going to get it's going to go out. So, of course, you could put a roof over it, but you're going to be using your campfire as to build to cook food at the beginning of the game as well. So for me, I always like to put the campfire in the house and you can either do it at the end. If you do it at the end, you can just build a chimney and have it go out that way. What I typically do is I typically put it in the center of the house or the center of my first house. And the reason for that is then I can just have my bed anywhere in the house and I can also just cook and it just makes it just easier. So we're going to put the campfire right here. So let's place a campfire down right at the beginning. We're going to place it right in the middle there. And then what we're going to do now is we're just going to build around it. So I'm going to plan out where I'm going to put my bed and things like that. So things you need to know about the campfire, however, are going to be that the campfire will go out if it gets rained on. So you're going to have to put a roof up. You can't just leave it wide open. You can either use a chimney or a roof. I typically build a roof and I'll show you how I build mine that allows the ventilation out there. If you build too close to it, so if I put a roof piece over this, it will smoke it out. So if I just go down here and I put a roof piece over here, more likely than not, it's going to smoke it out because it's not going to have enough room here. So you'll notice actually I might need a wall next to it, but now it actually went out pretty quickly there. So the fire does have to have ventilation. Otherwise, it'll smoke itself out. You also want to have the smoke getting away from you because if you're too close to the smoke, You'll notice here that I will start taking smoke damage. I'll start taking two HP damage at a time, I believe, if I'm too close to it. Or maybe if maybe if I was maybe if the roof was over it. Anyway, the smoke will cause HP damage, so you want to make sure you have a roof uh, that's high enough. So what we're gonna do is here is I'm just gonna build my walls along here, 
and you're going to notice that you want to make sure you attach it to the floor so it will snap in if you want to build off the grid you can actually hold shift and it'll let you place it anywhere but typically you're going to want to place it on the grid and you can just do something like this and then we'll probably put a window over here just because this is a nice area here that can look over the water Honestly, I would recommend building your water if possible. That's going to make your life a little bit easier later on in the game, but you can certainly just build wherever you want. So now that I've built all the walls, I'm going to go around check and just make sure everything is blue. You want to make sure the lowest level of your house, everything is blue. Otherwise, what you might have to do is raise the ground. To raise the ground, you just need to use the hoe and then uh, have a couple of stones and it'll raise the ground off. Then you can flatten it back down. But just make sure everything's blue. I built a giant house in one of my previous saves. What ended up happening was I didn't realize the entire floor was green because it was just a little bit off the ground. So I ended up having to go back and destroy every floor piece, raise the ground a little bit. And then once I did that, I was able to build much higher. So here we have our basic level foundation. And this is kind of just how I build my house. We can put a window in over here if we want to. And we'll just plop that there. And then what I normally do is I just build up from here. And I'm not going to build it terribly high. You're going to notice that they're going to start turning green here. And that's because they are not grounded in the ground. So let me build this all the way around. Okay, now that we've built the second layer of walls around here, I'm going to check those and make sure everything's green. That's good to go. So what we're going to do now is we're going to attach the roof to it. I'm going to go with the 45 degree roof piece. You can go with 26. It's really up to you. This is just going to provide better ventilation so the smoke does not just stay low to the ground. We don't want to end up have, taking damage from the smoke. So we're just going to put these 45s on here on both sides and then attach them at the top. Okay, so I have most of the roof built. I cannot reach the top piece. So all I'm going to do here is a nice little trick you can do here is you can just put a ladder up and then reach areas you otherwise would not be able to. So actually, I could, might be able to jump on the roof here. Oh, it might be a little too steep. Yep, it's a little too steep. So if you can't reach an area, a nice little trick you can do is just build ladders up. And that'll help you reach areas that you otherwise would not be able to reach. And we'll just do this. Bam. So now I can place that roof piece. Once I put the first one down, I'll be able to connect all the rest of them pretty, pretty easily from the inside. So we'll just go back in here. And we should be able to just connect them by just snapping here. You're going to notice these pieces up here are turning different colors. Hopefully it doesn't break. I don't think it's going to. But let's just check with our hammer. The centerpiece might be red. So that's anything, Any if I would have built any more attached to that, it would have probably broken. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to start building this area up here. These walls raise them up just to give more support to the roof so it doesn't end up collapsing at some point in the future when I decide to expand on it. So we're going to have these 45 degree wall here. Put that one there. Put that one, attach that one up here. And we'll just do that all the way around. Once we have those in place, we can put in the cross up here, which will connect this. Not sure if this is going to reach. Might have to get in the ladder to do this one or just go outside, honestly. You just have to point it right in the right spot. That's just going to give us our nice little finishing off that side. Let's do this one over here. Then we can actually put a beam across the middle because that'll probably allow... It'll probably strengthen up the roof a little bit. So let's just go in here and then we're going to finish off the upper walls here because we don't want it to be wide open like that. So we'll just fill this in with regular walls you can leave a window you're gonna definitely want to leave a window up there though because you want the smoke to billow out so what we're gonna do is fill this in like this do this on both sides and we'll notice the smoke should be billowing out the top on both sides which is exactly what we want so yep, as you can see there the smoke is billowing out and this is exactly what i wanted this keeps the smoke this is going to prevent you from it's going to prevent the fire from smoking out it's also going to prevent you from taking damage unless of course you're standing right over it but any, if the roof is too low, what will end up happening is smoke will fill the house and you'll start taking damage from the smoke. Next up, what we want to do now is we want to place our bed down. So we're going to place a bed over here. And we'll just place it in the corner near the water because that's going to be a cool little view there. And then we'll claim that bed and that's our spawn point. So our spawn point is set on that bed. Other things you're going to need to know, of course, is like the bed's got to be under a roof to sleep on it near a fire. And we can start building our craft, our workstations in here. So we got ourselves a workbench, which I need a little bit more wood. Actually, I can just go outside right now and destroy this one. Or I probably have wood in here, right? Let's just grab this wood and we'll build ourselves a workbench inside. You can leave the workbenches outside for now if you're going to still be building. But it's just really up to you what you want to do. We'll place this over here in the corner. And now you'll notice since it's under the roof, I'll be able to go over here and repair my equipment. So a couple other tips and tricks here are going to be that you want to make sure you leave yourself plenty of room for expansion. Each crafting station in the game, such as the workbench and others you'll unlock later on, can be upgraded. Upgrading them is going to require you to place an additional structure, which is going to be an additional, like it's a crafting station, but you don't actually use it. It just upgrades this so you can make better gear or upgrade to different up higher levels. Each one of those is going to have to take up their own tile. So you want to make sure like this thing I think can go up. I think these this can be upgraded five times, maybe six. I think it's five times. And 
each one of those is going to take up a space. So when you're building your house, plan on at the very least at the beginning of the game, giving yourself enough room. This is probably enough for a starter house. Then later on, you can build a bigger one. In addition to that, if you're kind of tight for space, what you can do is if you're running out of space for putting chests down, you can actually use either the regular floor pieces like this, or I like to use the half floor pieces here and just do it right here. And I could place a shelf all the way along here if I wanted to. Now, this is a blocking window. That wouldn't be ideal. But just to show you how it works, you can put a chest under here. So you can put your chests under here. You can place your chests very close together. So place them as close together as possible. I know it doesn't look that great aesthetically, but it's okay. And then what you can do is if you don't have enough room for your other chest, you can just put them on top of a little shelf here. So that's just going to give you even more room. You could also, if you wanted to, build a like build storage up here above this. Like you could just build a little floor up here so you can get to it via a ladder and have a second floor under here, build a loft. But this is kind of the house I recommend building at the beginning. Like I said, you can build the long houses. It would basically be the same as this, except it would have the roof piece coming down one more. And I want to have the walls over here. It's going to be a little bit tougher to build that big enough because supporting the roof just becomes a pain in the butt. I did that on my last playthrough where I built a giant long house and it took me hours and hours and hours to shore up the roof just because of how tall, how big the building ended up being. So that's how the building system of Valheim works. Hopefully this will help you get started on your very first base. If you found this video helpful, make sure to hit the like button. And here's a video where I share 55 things I wish I knew when I started playing Valheim that you might find helpful as well.